Hello, it is the 10th of November 2012 and welcome to another edition of the Health Research Report. And to start out with a curiosity question. Did you know that sugar helps you pay attention? I'm not talking the taste of sweet. I'm actually talking sugar. But not necessarily in a way that you think. Well, here's an interesting tool that you may be able to use later on, especially when in being involved in tasks, let's say, for example, monotonous work, where you show up to work late, but now you have to do accounting or whatever it is, but you need to focus. Maybe even go into a late night meeting or whatever it is. Once you commit to it, you've got to do it and you've got to focus. Here's a trick. This is not about staying awake. This is about keeping focus. This was done in the October 22nd issue of Psychological Science. And it's called something called Mouth Rinse with Glucose Improves Self-Control. What they did was this. They had two groups. A control group and, of course, the sugar group. What they did is they had one group drink lemonade mixed with Splenda, which gave the taste of sweetness. They gave the other group lemonade mixed with glucose which obviously is sweet also then they took a statistics book and had them just look at the statistics book and just cross out all the E's just dumb stuff which often a lot of us get stuck doing over and over and over again then they performed what was called the Stroop task I hope I'm pronouncing that right where they flashed colors in words over and over and over again. And basically the objective of the Stroop task, in their words, is to turn off the student's tendency to read the words, instead see the colors. They're trying to psychologically fatigue them. And then what they said in the report was those that rinsed with sugar rather than the artificial sweetener were significantly faster at responding to the color rather than the word something very easy which they can measure with basically the groups don't know whether they're getting the glucose or the sweetener. They said researchers used to think you had to drink the glucose and get into your body to give you energy and to have self-control. Martin, which was the researcher, after this trial said it seems the glucose stimulates the simple carbohydrate centers on the tongue. This in turn like some sort of communication system, turns signals the motivational centers of the brain where self-related goals are represented. These signals tell your body to pay attention. They theorized that the glucose uh, causes what's called emotive enhancement, leading the person to pay attention to their goals and perform better at the non-dominant response. And what they also said too, when you do this, it basically helps the swishing motion, I should say, back this up. The glucose can help you focus back on those, on those goals and feelings, and this, in turn, can help you perform better on the second task. In short, we believe self-control goes away because people send it away, not because you don't have the energy for self-control. It's basically you eventually just voluntarily turn it off. People turn it off on purpose. Martin's research, this is a basically a, a little addendum, focused on what effects the switching to the glucose had psychologically rather than how it was physiological. Again, so real interesting. Had to do some monotonous tasks, you burnt out, gargle with a little bit of actually sugar, not something that tastes sweet, but something that is actually is sugar, and that in turn triggers chemicals in the tongue, communicate to the brain, allows you to focus on the second task, far better than just doing nothing at all. Now we come back to one of our favorite subjects, weight control. And this is interesting. Let's say you have to go with friends or you're traveling on the road and you got to eat some starchy food that you don't necessarily want to eat. And yes, I'm talking another category of what's called starch blocker. What you can do is really simple. And this is what they did. These are Penn State researchers, and this research is published on the online version of Molecular Nutrition and Food Research. They discovered that green tea has a really interesting impact. So here you are on the road. you got to eat something you don't necessarily want to eat. You know it's going to wreak havoc on, your, havoc on your body. 
and you feel but you're hungry and but you got to do it so you drink a little bit of green tea now keep in mind before I go further into this article it does not work with simple sugars these are starch molecules things that require to be broken down before they're simple sugars why because a chemical in the green tea called EGCG what it does it inhibits amylase enzymes and what this does in turn is generally at least for mice is after consuming that starchy meal they found the spike in the blood glucose, le blood glucose levels was 50 percent lower than basically the control group it also had one more interesting impact i'm not aware of any of the starch blockers has it also inhibited alpha amylase, pro amylase production in the pancreas by 34 percent so it kind of had a double whammy it, the starch product the starch enzymes in the mouth it inhibited and then walk up back past that part of the body into your low a little later on in the digestive system it inhibited some of the enzymes from the pancreas what was required to break down the starches now it does not require an extraordinary amount of green tea in order to do this job in this case the researchers claim it only was about to equivalent into a cup and a half of green tea and that was it so something that's very easy to do if you're in a position where you can't eat the foods that you like or the foods that you like you want to eat just do about a cup and a half of green tea and about half that sugar spike is going to be reduced and you're not going to break as much of it down which is actually not a bad thing so you don't have to feel as guilty when you do eat that pancake or donut or whatever it is you are with your friends and then to finally end the report an interesting article on one of my favorite beverages also since it looks like we're on the beverage uh, bandwagon here coffee what does coffee do which is so special well there's lots, lots of benefits in regards to caffeine and coffee but here's one you haven't heard of at least I haven't heard of until the past at least myself had not heard of until a couple of days ago in a research article that was published on the public library published in the public library of science called caffeine improves recognition of positive words now you know what they why they serve you coffee before that office meeting all right now I'm not gonna say all right as often I promise myself two to three cups of coffee improve brain processing a positive but not negative or neutral words so coffee makes you actually does make you see the glass half full or I should say that silver lining on the cloud in their words this study showed a small dose of caffeine also increased their speed and accuracy for recognizing words with positive connotation but you did not recognize neutral or negative words any better but you definitely notice the positive words more so and this research was done in Germany they believe that the caffeine enhances the neural processing of positive words but not those with the negative connotations again to back it up in their words the study demonstrates for the first time that consuming 200 milligrams of caffeine the equivalent of two to three cups of coffee 30 minutes before a task can improve the implicit recognition of positive words the authors suggest that this effect is driven by caffeine strong dopa uh, dopaminogenic effects in the language dominant areas of the brain so there you have it a little bit of cup of coffee before a date or a meeting or whatever it is can make things appear more so in your favor also when you think about it if you take coffee <laughs> A little bit of green tea and rinse your mouth with a little bit of sugar in that coffee you'll be able to pay attention better you won't put on pounds as much and the meal will seem a lot more positive than it normally would have all right that's me Ralph Turciano 10th of November 2012 thank you very much for listening once again and I will catch you guys obviously shortly within the next few days or so catch you in a bit bye